Hey guys, this is a two part video about these right here, mushrooms that you can collect around local forest or even in your own yard. And one of the things I always recommend is safety, 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 because mushrooms can be very deadly. And I'm handling this mushroom right here with gloves because I don't want to take any unnecessary chances with possible toxins. Not that it could be absorbed through the skin, but because you might wipe your eye, you could touch your nose or mouth, and it could get into your bloodstream, and that could be very bad for you. There's been many, many cases of people being poisoned by not knowing what kind of mushroom they had. There's three things that I want to say in the beginning of this video regarding collecting mushrooms. One, you need to know absolutely what you're doing. So I'm going to give you a book, a link to a book in the description that is very highly rated and it's about collecting mushrooms and not having to fear so much about what you're collecting. Two, I would recommend check your local area and see if there's a mushroom collecting club where there's an expert within the club, somebody that really knows what they're talking about, not somebody that maybe just thinks they know what they're talking about, somebody with a PhD and really understands what they're talking about because mushroom collecting can be deadly and it can be fatal. Number three, if you didn't have any of the first two and you just we're kind of going to wing it. I would recommend not doing that. Go to your local grocery store and collect your mushrooms from the produce section because that's going to be a lot safer. So just remember, mushrooms, many of them can look just alike. You can have a toxic one and a non-toxic one and they look so similar that you wouldn't know. So you need an expert, you need to have photographs, you need a very comprehensive book that will tell you. And if you can't get the first two, then go with a grocery store, the produce section, you're sure to get some safe mushrooms there. I have a friend that actually is a PhD and he knows all about mushrooms. He's an expert on them, about fungi. So whenever he goes on one of his annual mushroom collecting trips, I go with him so I can pick up some interesting mushrooms and I don't have to worry about picking up a toxic one. So today's video, the first part of the two part video is going to be about 20 of the most deadly mushrooms. Now in the thumbnail, I put a picture of a mushroom that looks absolutely horrendously deadly. Believe it or not, that mushroom is not really that deadly. It could cause upset stomach, but it's not like the mushrooms I'm gonna talk about. So that's what you're seeing in the thumbnail is the bleeding tooth mushroom. It's not toxic like these next 20 will be. So I'm gonna give you a rundown, what they are, the type of poison, and where they all, most often are found growing in your forest. So guys, depending on how many photos I've taken of each type, I might have one, two, or three actual photos of each mushroom in my photo library. So let's start with the death cap. It is one of the most deadly mushrooms that you'll come across. And I'll put a name of the, the technical name of each mushroom on the screen as we go. But the first mushroom is the death cap, and it often has a pale green to yellowish cap. It'll have white gills and a bulbous vase, excuse me, a bulbous at the base. There'll be a bulbous little area as it comes in contact with the ground. Now, this one is very toxic. It contains amatoxins that cause liver and kidney failure. So eating this mushroom, there may not be a chance for you if you don't make it to the emergency room. And even if you do, it still may be fatal. So stay away from this one. Make sure you understand exactly what it is. Take a close look at those pictures. And remember, never collect mushrooms with, without someone who knows exactly what they're doing. This is also found in temperate regions under deciduous trees like oak and beech. So the first again to recap is death cap mushroom. So guys, the second mushroom, I'm gonna put a few pictures up here. I think I have uh, a couple of pictures in the library, so I'll throw those up as well. Destroying angel mushroom. Now this is a pure white mushroom with slender, with a slender stem and a sac-like area at the bottom. Now, this is a very toxic, it contains also the amatoxins and they're highly fatal if ingested. The common habitat for this mushroom is under deciduous and conif coniferous trees in your local forest. Now guys, the third mushroom is a fly agargic or a jaric, or jaric, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And again, I'll put the technical name of it on the screen. But this is a very interesting mushroom to see in the forest. It has a bright red cap with small white warts or flakes all over it. And it has white gills and a ring around the stem right under the top of the mushroom. So look for that as well. This also contains ibotenic acid and mousse simical. And I'm not sure I'm pronouncing either one of those right, but I'm just trying to tell you what they are. So this causes hallucinations and nausea. So if you're in the forest and you're foraging mushrooms, you eat this, it's gonna make it where you're guaranteed to get lost and it's not gonna turn out well for you. So the habitat of this particular red mushroom is found 
near birch, pine, and spruce trees. Okay, the fourth mushroom I have in my list here is panther cap, and you can see the name of it, the technical name on the screen right there. Now this mushroom, it has a brown cap with small whitish type warts and a ring on the stem as well, and this contains ibotenic acid, and I can't pronounce this word, but it's mucimal. Mucimal. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's the two toxins found in this mushroom. The habitat of this mushroom is found in coniferous and deciduous forests, so this could be anywhere in the world. Now the next mushroom is called Fool's Funnel, and this is a white to pale gray funnel-shaped cap with decurrent grills, and, excuse me, decurrent gills, not grills, and the toxicity is the same muscarine and it causes sweating, vomiting, and re respiratory issues, and it can be very toxic if you get this into your system. It grows in grassy areas, in common lawns around you. You'll often see this in your lawn, and often in open meadows. Now the next one, number six, is deadly web cap. And this is an orange to reddish brown cap with a cobweb-like veil. The toxicity is aureliane, aurelinine, causing kidney damage, and the habitat of this particular mushroom is found in carnivorous forest. Now this next mushroom should say it all. Just the name of it tells you exactly what it can do, but it's called funeral bell, and this is a small brown bell-shaped cap with a ring on the stem, and it contains amatoxins, and the habitat is found on decaying wood in forest, and that's very common. You'll see these growing on a fallen tree or a dead area of a tree that has yet to fall. Now the next is called Autumn Skull Cap. The description of this one is brown to yellow brown. It's, it's a brown to yellow brown cap with a sticky texture to it and it contains amatoxins. Again, this can be a very, very lethal mushroom and it's often found, again, growing on rotting wood. So a fallen tree that's just starting to disintegrate over a period of time, you'll see these mushrooms pop up along the dead and decaying wood. So guys, the next one is number nine, yellow stainer mushroom. And it is a white cap that turns yellow when it's bruised. It has an unpleasant odor and its toxicity causes gastro, gastrointestinal distress. The habitat is in grasslands, parks, and gardens. So this is a very common mushroom that you might see as you're going through a park or in your own garden. Now the next mushroom, number 10, is called poison pie, and that should say it all, shouldn't it? It's a beige to tan cap with a slimy texture, texture and a radish-like smell, and it also causes gastrointestinal issues, and it can be much worse if you just consume far too much of it. It can be quite toxic. Now the habitat of this one is often found in grassy areas and forest edges. Now, number 11, we have the green spored parasol, and it is a large white cap with green spores, and the toxicity of this one also causes severe gastrointestinal distress and can be fatal if consumed too much of it. So again, it's about how much of a dose you take of one of these mushrooms. It could be really bad for you. So even a small amount, I wouldn't even think about any of these mushrooms, testing it to see what it's like. Never do that. So unfortunately, ivory funnel, I only have one photograph of this, and I'll give you a description. It's a small white funnel-shaped mushroom with decurrent gills, and it contains muscarine, and the habitat of this one is in grasslands and lawns. Not too common in my area, but I have seen one on a hike on occasion. Now the next mushroom is called jack-o'-lantern mushroom, and it has an unusual feature that the other mushrooms don't have. It's bright orange and has bioluminescent mushrooms, so it can actually have a little bit of a glow sometime under right, the right conditions. And the toxicity of this one can cause severe vomiting and cramps. This often grows on decaying wood, so it's very common for me to see these in my area. And I've never even collected one, but I don't have any plans to as well. So guys, number 14 is exceptionally toxic, and this is called false morel, and I've got the name of it right there on the screen, but it is a brain-like wrinkled cap, brown to reddish in color, and it actually looks like a brain, and it contains gyromythrin, and it causes liver and central nervous system damage. This is often found on forest floors near conifers. 
Now, unfortunately, number 15, I only have one photo in my photo library of this one, and it's a little bit more rare. So it is called Tiger Tricoloma, and this particular mushroom has a gray cap, dark spots, and white gills, and this one causes, again, gastrointestinal symptoms, and is found in mountainous and carnivorous forests. Now, number 16 is called Poison Pax, and this mushroom, as you can see, has a brown cap with rolled edges and decurrent gills, and it causes severe allergic reactions. So if you already have food allergies, this one could be extremely bad, extremely fatal in, in someone's case that has those type of allergic reactions to different food items. Now, this is often found in wooded areas and on mossy ground, so kind of a wet habitat, you might see the Poison Pax. Now, number 17, you might think it sounds like it's something you'd see in a Lord of the Rings movie, but Elfin Saddle is a black saddle-shaped cap with a wrinkled surface, and it contains low levels of gyromythrin. And the habitat of this one is found in forest, and again, it's often found near moss. Now, number 18, again, I only have one pick of it, so I'll just put that up for you, but this is called Red Staining. Inocybe, it's very hard to pronounce. I'm sure if someone out there knows the exact pronunciation, they'll help me out in the comments. But again, one pick of that one, and that particular one is a bell-shaped brownish cap that stains red when bruised, and it contains muscarine, and it's found in woodlands. Now, I'm sure that I'm these chemicals, I'm probably mispronouncing it, and often chemicals are pronounced differently in different parts of the world. So if you happen to know exactly how it's pronounced in your part of the world, I hope you'll put a comment down below that tells me exactly how you pronounce it. Now, number 19 is called Brown Roll Rim. And the description of this, as you can see, it's brown, it has a rolled cap, and it has a sticky surface. And the toxicity causes hemolysis or hemolysis and kidney damage and this grows in forest and it often grows near birch trees that seems to be a common theme that birch trees seem to have a lot of mushrooms that grow around them now that's kind of unusual but it's what they're saying in all the experts that birch trees seem to have a connection maybe a symbiotic connection with the mushroom now the last one is livid entoloma mushroom and this one is a pale cream to yellowish cap with free gills and the toxicity of this one can cause severe gastro, gastrointestinal distress. Now, if you're on a forest hike or you're camping, that's the worst time to have that because you may not be able to make it back to your car or wherever you're staying. If you go into that severe gastrointestinal stress, you might survive the eating of the mushroom, but then you find that you're in such distress and such pain that you can't make it back to civilization. Now, this last mushroom, number 20, is often found in grasslands and wooded areas. So guys, again, I'm not an expert in identifying mushrooms, and I don't think most people are, so you need to rely on people who are experts, such as these two right here that I'm going to take to my friend who's an expert on identifying mushrooms and let him tell me exactly what they are. And I collected these again with gloves. The name of the book that I referenced at the beginning of the video, again, it's in the description, but it's Collecting Mushrooms Without Fear. But even so, I wouldn't only rely on that book, I would rely on a mushroom collecting club or somebody who is a true expert on mushrooms. Or if by default, if you don't have access to any of those things, you don't want to order the book, just go to your local grocery store and you get some of the best mushrooms, especially at Whole Foods and other places like that that have such a huge variety of mushrooms. So that is what I would recommend, is to stay away from eating any mushrooms unless there's a true expert in your group that knows exactly what's that's in that mushroom. So guys, my videos cover everything from bonsai to vegetable gardening to unusual home and garden projects. I just like to put up videos about things I have an interest in. So again, mushrooms are one of those things that I find fascinating. And I, I've always been on the search for that mushroom that truly grows, glow, excuse me, glows like a kind of a greenish toxic slime green and I've always wanted to find those at night and I've never been able to see one that truly glows like that. So that's a rare mushroom. But if you have any questions about this video or any of the other videos in my extensive library of videos, leave a question below. But if you do leave a question, please become a subscriber first because I put subscribers to the front of the line on anybody that asks a question. So guys, I really appreciate you watching and I hope you'll become a subscriber.